Recall that in section 9.1, we saw a preview of the interval we're going to be working with in section 9.2. And in that interval, we can see this little t alpha over 2, which looks a lot like z alpha over 2, but it's the letter t. So we need to spend some time learning about the t distribution, students' t distribution, as a matter of fact. Now, I always love telling the tale of students' t distribution because it's a fun one. Why is it students' t distribution? What's going on? And to do that, I need to tell you the tale of William Seeley Gossett. So William Seeley Gossett was a brewer, chemist, right, English statistician, and he was working for Guinness, the company that makes beer, right? So Guinness, and he was working there as their head brewer. And as he was working, he was taking little small samples and trying to develop confidence intervals from those samples. And he discovered that that the z-curve just wasn't right. It, it wasn't working correctly. It was always a little bit off. And so basically he developed a new curve called student's t-distribution. But the reason it was called student was because he had to hide who he was. So he sent it off to the publisher and said, you know, who was his former professor actually, and said, you know, please don't tell anybody this is me because I can't lose my job. The fact that I work for Guinness is, is a hush-hush secret. So his professor published his, his contribution, the T distribution, under the name student because he was his former student. And so that's why it's called student's T distribution and the name just stuck. <laughs> so there you go. So student's T distribution is a new distribution that we will look at right here. And it's actually a lot of curves simultaneously. It's not a one curve. There's actually infinitely many curves in there. So you can see there's one for, oops, I clicked on something, there we go. There's one, there's like a yellow curve. This is the same curve by the picture, by the way, that's on your notes. So there's a curve for degrees of freedom is one, degrees of freedom is two. There's a whole bunch of different curves. And this is the student's T distribution. These are just um, three of the curves. And that black one right there, that's the Z curve. Okay, so what's happening is that Gossett noticed that you couldn't use the Z curve, the T, because you don't know sigma. So you have to use his curve, which is the T curve. So the Z curve is the best. It's the one we really wish we could use. It's that black curve right there, okay? And then there are all these other curves for the T curves, right? The smallest one is right here, it's that orange one. So that orange curve right there is degrees of freedom is one. That's the lowest T curve we can have, right, in terms of the peak. But then we can get another curve at two, another curve at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They're all in there, right? So the T curves are very similar um, to the Z curve, but they have a shorter peak. Oh, I should say very similar to the Z curve. Sorry about that. To the Z curve. It's a typo. But the T curves curves have a shorter peak and larger tails. See how the tails over here are above that um, black curve right there. As a matter of fact, I think you can see it better on the actual graph right here. So see the black curve right there is the Z curve. So it's got a really tiny tail. Whereas the orange, the pink, and the blue curves, those Z curves, or it's me, those T curves, those T curves have larger tails and then shorter peaks than the Z curve. All right, now what else? Well, we learned that there are infinitely many of these curves based on something called the degrees of freedom, but there's only one Z curve, the best. The, the Z curve is the Z curve we know and love. There's only one of those, but T curves, there are infinitely many of them. All right, now what are some properties we're noticing about these T curves as we look at them? Well, again, they're based on the degrees of freedom. That's what this is right here, the one, two, and the five. Those are the degrees of freedom. In the Wikipedia page, they give them a Greek letter, which is new. That's a lowercase new, but doesn't matter for our purposes. Just think of it as degrees of freedom, which I abbreviate as DF, degrees of freedom. And so does the textbook author, as a matter of fact. Now, all of these T curves are centered around zero just like the z-curve is, right? So the center of all of them is right there, zero. And they're all symmetric around zero, right? So they're centered at and symmetric around zero. Now the area under the t-curve, while it's still 
a probability distribution. And if there's one thing we learned is that probability distributions have to have the entire area under the curve be one. Right? Probabilities have to add up to one. And that means that the area to the right of zero under any one of these curves and the area to the left of zero would always be 0.5. Again, because it's a probability distribution that's symmetric. And then the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. You can see the curves are getting closer and closer to that x-axis, but never touching it. And then really important, it's more spread out than the z-distribution. It has a shorter peak and larger tails. And then as the sample size increases, right, as n increases, your sample size increases, then the t-curve gets closer and closer to the z-curve, which is why you're seeing up here, as my degrees of freedom increases, see the blue curve right there, which is degrees of freedom 5, has a much higher peak. It's getting closer and closer to the z-curve, which is the best curve, the one we wish we could use, but we can't, as William Seeley Gossett proved. All right, so now let's look, let's put this together and see if this makes sense to us. If we have two T curves drawn, one of them has a degrees of freedom as four and one of them has degrees of freedom as one, which one is which? Hmm. Okay, well remember what this last part says. It says that as the sample size increases, the density curve of T, right, the curve, gets closer and closer to the Z curve. Hmm. Okay, so that will mean that one of these, the one that's more spread out, right, will have a lower n. So if I look at this curve right here, color it green right here, that curve has to be degrees of freedom is 1 because it's more spread out. Now, how do we tell that? How do we tell how spread out something is? Well, remember what it said right here. More spread out because it's got a shorter peak and larger tail. Or this other curve right here, which has, it's kind of below it and then crosses over and is up above and crosses back down is down below. It's got a taller peak and smaller tail. So this would be degrees of freedom is four because it has less spread. And the peak is the peak in the middle. And the tail is smaller, you can see it because it's down below right there. Now one other side note, it didn't ask for this, but it's not a bad thing to learn how to do. What was the sample size here? Because the degrees of freedom is four, degrees of freedom is n minus one, right? So what take away one is four? So we can make a note for this one, n must have been five. This was sample size five because five minus one is four. This particular one, down here, the green one, was n equal 2, right? n is equal to 2 because 2 take away 1 is 1, right? And your degrees of freedom is n minus 1. No, the problem didn't ask for that, but it's not a bad idea to know how to do it.